these problems are from the study guide. They're worked out solutions for specific study guide questions. So here is number 12 from that study guide. And what we have is an absolute value in a quality. And the first thing we always want to do is isolate the absolute value. So whenever you have something that's being added, subtracted, multiplied, divided by that absolute value, you want to get rid of it by doing an opposite operation. So I'm going to take this 2 and I'm going to subtract it from both sides to isolate that absolute value. And so now I've got the absolute value of x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 2. So since I've got this isolated now, I can set up my 2 inequalities. I've got x minus 3 can be greater than or equal to 2, but it could also be less than or equal to negative 2. Now I say less than because it points towards the x. So from this point, I just need to do one operation. I need to add 3 to both sides. And so when I do that, it will cancel out the number that's being added to x and leave x by itself and we'll have our solution. So the values of x can be greater than or equal to 5, but they can also be less than or equal to positive 1. I had to subtract because they're opposite in sign. Now if I were to graph this, this is an OR statement. So if I put 5 here, 1 here, there'd be closed circles on those numbers because values of x equal 1 and equal 5, but the values of x are also greater than 5, so that means the values are off to the right. And then the values of x here are less than 1, that means they're off to the left. And so whenever you have an OR statement, you're not going to write the answer this way. You're going to write it with two separate inequalities and the word OR in between. So on the test, you would see it this way. x is less than or equal to 1, or x is greater than or equal to 5. Notice that the inequality sign points to the x in this problem, and it points to the x here as well, so they need to match. Let's take a look at the next one. <clears throat> here we have the same situation. We need to isolate the absolute value. And so the way we're going to do that is opposite operations again. This is a positive 1, so I'm going to take 1 away from both sides. And so once I've done that, I now have the absolute value of x minus 5, and this is less than 1. So from this point, I can set up my two problems. I can set up my two inequalities by saying x minus 5, since it's in absolute values, can be less than 1, but it can also be greater than negative 1. See it open towards the x, that's why I said greater than. So from this point, all we have to do is an opposite operation. We get x by itself. So here I have to add 5 to all sides. And then from there, we'll have the range of values for x. So the values of x, now x is by itself because I took out this 5, so x is all by itself here, are less than 6. See, it points to the x, so I say less than. But now I'm going to read the other way x is greater than, because it's open to the x now, greater than positive 4. So if I were to graph this, I'll have an AND statement, because the values of x are in between these numbers, and you'll see that. The values of x are not 4, they're not 6, because they don't equal. But the values of x are less than 6, and x values of x are greater than 4. So the values of x are in between. So this is considered an AND statement. And so when you see the answer on the test, if this were the problem, this would be it right here. And so let's move on to number 15. Number 15 is just an equation. Lots of parts here. It's a simplifying to do. And a common mistake is people want to distribute a 5 over those numbers. That's where you make your error. Here we have a minus sign and we're subtracting x plus 3 from 5. So whenever we subtract, we could add the opposite. And basically all I'm going to do is distribute a negative 1 over both numbers. On the other side of the equation, 
common mistake is to combine these terms, but that would be wrong because multiplication comes before addition. So I need to use that distributive property again, distribute the positive 2 over those two terms. So what's left? <clears throat> well, we've got the 5, we've got a minus x, we've got a minus 3. And that's another common mistake. Make sure you distribute the negative over that positive number. Bring down the negative 1, and I've got a positive 2x and a negative 6. So next, I need to collect, collect like terms. And we do that on the same side of the equal sign. Don't collect from one side to the other. Collect on the same side. So collecting just means simplify. Whatever the signs are in front of the terms is what you do. So those are opposite in signs. So I need to subtract those two numbers. So when I do that, I end up with a 2. But I've got to bring down that minus x. And this equals. Well, let's go ahead and collect on the right-hand side of that equal sign. See, I have a negative 1. I have a negative 6. So I collect. Collect means just combine. And you look at the signs, they're both the same. Well, that means I add the two numbers. So I get negative 7 plus 2x. Again, a common mistake is people want to do opposite operations on the same side. We don't do that. We do opposite operations when we go from one side of the equal sign to the other. So that's what I'm going to do next. Now I need to isolate the variable. So I need to decide which way do I want to bring the variable. Well, I'm going to go ahead and add this x to both sides. If I do that, it's going to cancel out the x term on the left side. So if that's the case, I need to bring the constant to the left-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and add that 7 to both sides to cancel out the 7 on the right. So what I'm left with is the constant on the left-hand side, and that's a positive 9. And this all equals 3x. So I just have one final step to do, and that is to divide by 3. So when I do that division, we've got our answer. <coughs> so x equals 3. Well, one more problem. So that's just a an equation. Here's another equation. Thought this one would be a good one because it's got some fractions. Typically, I'm going to cancel out the fractions if I've got them. Well, both denominators are the same, so I can cancel those out <clears throat> by multiplying by 5. Now, the trick with this method is that you have to multiply every number by 5, and that's where people will mess up. So they won't multiply the 11 by 5, and they won't multiply the 2 by 5. And all this method does is it eliminates those fractions. So now we have just integers in the equation. And so when I do that, those 5's cancel out. Left with 1, you multiply across. We've got negative 2x. Do the same thing here. We have a positive 10. And this equals, well, these 5's cancel out to make 1. 1 times 1x makes just 1x. And then 11 times 5 makes 55. So from that point, we need to isolate the variable. That means bring those x's to one side. So this time I'll bring the x's to the other side. I'll go ahead and subtract x from both sides. Now if I do that, the x's cancel out here. So those are gone now. So I'm left with just a variable on the left and constants on both sides. So I want to move those constants over to the right-hand side. So I'll subtract that 10 to cancel out the constants on the left. And so let's see what's left over. When I combine, I look at these two signs, and they're both the same sign. So whenever they're the same sign, that tells me to add. So that makes a negative 3x. And this all equals, well, here they're opposite signs, so I'm subtracting. get 45. So I just have one final step here. I need to divide by that negative 3 both sides, and we'll have our answer. So in this case, we have an x equals, got to be careful with the sign because a positive over a negative makes a negative. 15 is the number. So there it is. Those are some answers. I'll do some other parts and give you some more answers.